Hi, I'm Rick Hartley. I've been in the industry for over 50 years and I've been consulting with companies and teaching classes on EMI and various other topics for about the last 30 years. What is the purpose of grounding a circuit? There are actually three things that we call ground and really only one of them is ground. Unfortunately, people use the word ground to describe things that aren't actually ground. We have the earth, that is ground. The reason people use the earth is to attach systems to it for safety, and we also use it to divert things like lightning and other high energy fields. Uh, the second thing we call ground is the chassis that surrounds our electronics. That chassis, even when we connect it to ground, is not actually ground. It is just a Faraday cage, and the reason we use metal in the chassis isn't to ground the metal, it's to contain the fields of the circuit to prevent EMI problems and other things. And so many people will call that ground, it isn't really ground. The third thing we call ground are the planes in our board, the reference planes. And those also are not at ground potential. Even when you attach them to the chassis and then to the earth, they are still not at ground potential. So it's important to understand when you say ground, what do you really mean? If you're talking about the ground plane and the board, it's really just a reference plane. The chassis is a Faraday cage. The only real ground is earth ground. How does grounding affect the circuit current? Circuit current is developed by the electric and magnetic fields in a transmission line. Something people often don't understand is that the energy of a circuit does not travel in the current, it travels in the electric and magnetic fields. Those fields generate current. And when we do our job correctly, when we have a transmission line that's set up between a trace and a ground plane, what we call a ground plane, a reference plane, we get good containment of the fields and we get good control over the current. If we set up a board stack incorrectly and have the ground plane or a reference plane two or three dielectric layers away from traces or power, then we create problems, we get field spread, and we get noise coupling into the current. So the secret to correct grounding to control current and fields is to make sure that ground planes are always one dielectric space away from signals and one dielectric space away from power planes. EMI is just a, is just a, a specific source of noise. Noise means, in general, means interference. Whenever one circuit interferes with another, we call that noise. It's just a form of interference. If you have an analog and a digital circuit on the very same circuit board, and the digital circuit's strong fields interfere with the analog circuit, we call that noise. It's just interference. EMI is electromagnetic interference, is just the spreading of circuit energy out of our system that affects and corrupts other systems nearby. So really the only difference between them is what we're talking about. We tend to refer to local stuff as noise, and when we send energy far away to interrupt someone else's circuit, we call that EMI. It's just a, a, a nomenclature. How do you detect grounding issues in circuit boards? If you have interference in a circuit, there's an extremely high likelihood that you have a poor board stack up, that you don't have signals one dielectric layer away from a ground plane, from a reference plane, or that you have power that is more than one dielectric space away from a, a ground plane or a reference plane. So if you're having some sort of interference, it likely means your board stack up is not done well, which means that those are the things we call grounding problems, but they really come down to how well we have stacked the board and have the ground planes sitting relative to signals and power. That's really the bottom line. Most ICs, we, we do what the IC company tells us we need to do. ICs have ground pins on the ICs themselves, and those ground pins generally 
are connected to the negative side of signals. Most signals that come out of most integrated circuits are positive going signals, meaning they go from zero volts to some higher positive voltage relative to ground. So in most circuits, ground is connected to the negative side. Now, in things like ECHL and some of the old emitter coupled logic circuits of that type, they would basically ground the positive side so you had a negative going signal. And there are other signals besides ECHL that are negative going, but most ground the negative side versus the positive side. How do you draw a ground wire in a circuit diagram? Ground is generally shown not as a wire, but as a symbol. So all of the points on a circuit board, whether it's the bottom side of a capacitor or the ground pins of an IC or whatever, all of those pins need to connect to the reference plane, that which we call the ground plane. And to draw that on a circuit diagram, we would generally draw a symbol that we define as ground. The problem with that is there are standards. There are specific standards that the industry has established for what is ground, you know, what symbols do you use for ground. The problem is 99% of the companies that I've personally dealt with don't follow the standards. Most of them will use three lines above one another and call it ground, or they'll use a triangle attached to the ground pins and call it ground. Some even use the symbol that most companies use for case ground and call it ground. So there really is no, there actually is one correct way to do it. And that's defined by the ANSI standards. And if you're not sure how to handle that and you want to do it correctly, you should, you should consult the ANSI standards. But again, most people draw ground symbols however their company decides is the right way to do it. When somebody notifies me and says, we have an EMI problem, we have a noise problem, we have some sort of internal interference problem, the very first thing I ask them is, what is the stack up of your circuit board? In other words, which layers are signal, which layers are power, and which layers are ground? And 99% of the time, when they have a problem, it's because they've established a poorly designed board stack up. The bottom line to prevent these problems in all future designs, every signal layer should be one dielectric space above or below a ground plane, and every power layer should be immediately next to, above or below, a ground plane. If you follow that standard in all of your designs, you will, in 99.9% .9 of the time, prevent problems. Shielding, in most cases, there's several ways you can shield a circuit. The one that's most common is the chassis that goes around our electronics. Very often, some people will use a plastic chassis, and of course that offers no shielding effect at all because it has no way to contain and control the electric and magnetic fields. The, the most common way of shielding electronics is to put a metal chassis around the circuit boards themselves. And a lot of people refer to that as earth ground or chassis ground. It's not ground. It's simply a Faraday cage. And a Faraday cage is an enclosure that's designed to contain fields. If you contain the fields and keep them from getting out of the system, then you won't have EMI. The other aspect of that is to make sure that if you're going to put a shield, an enclosure around the electronics, to make sure that all of the cables coming out of the system have a properly attached shield on the cable itself. And people ask me all the time, where do you attach a cable shield? The answer is very simple, to the metal enclosure. People say, well, shouldn't I attach it to the internal ground plane? No, you should attach it to the metal chassis itself and that attachment needs to be as much as possible a complete circular attachment of the shield to the chassis. Things like RJ45 connectors do a terrible job of attaching shields. You need high quality connectors with well attached shields and a proper Faraday cage. That's how you shield electronics.
Oh, everything under the sun. They put Band-Aids everywhere on a system. Most of the time, when people encounter an EMI problem or a noise problem, they realize they've got something going wrong inside the circuit. And they will add filters to places to try to keep energy from getting out of the box. And that might work. That might be a mechanism that would work. But it usually, if that works, that's really more of a Band-Aid than an actual fix. Um, if, if, and they'll do things like put conductive tape around seams and boxes and all those kinds of things. Those are all just Band-Aids. Those are not real fixes. If you really want to fix the problem, design the board and the board stack up correctly in the first place. Make sure every route that you route is one dielectric space away from ground and every power layer is one dielectric space away from ground. If you do that, then you likely won't have EMI problems to worry about in the first place.